All right, so you guys ready to move on to the next album in the ranking? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Great transition. Uh, so coming up a third from the bottom in our ranking of every Kiss album, we've got Animalize next on the list. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I rank I it rank relatively you. low, but wow. I ranked it higher than you, so it's bullshit. It's your fault. Yeah, man. that's nonsense. No Holy crap. I mean, you can blame me because I put it exactly here. I only I, I put it a little higher than this, but not not much. Five or six so, higher than this. Steve, you're the most to blame. Why don't we start with you? Okay, well, with this one, basically I looked at it and said, what are the high points and what are the medium points and what are the low points? And the high point is they tried to do math rock with Lonely as the Hunter, and that was that was artistically kind of cool that they did that, even if they didn't do a very good job of it. So that was the high point of this album. And the low point was the line, I want to put my log in your fireplace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Also, just like every single lyric about fire throughout this. And why did they call it Animalize if the entire album was about fire? Anyway, we've been over this all before. This just wasn't a very good album. Uh, so let's see. Uh, then, Victor, you put it the Nets lowest. Uh, why do you hate fire? <laughs> well, because uh, R.E.M. already did this uh, with Document. They already, the subtitle of that album is file under fire and all of the songs are about fire fireplace so, is such a good fucking song there yeah that song that album has a lot of good fire songs on it i uh and this one doesn't this one has one good fire song on it in which I, would, I, would, <laughs> I would say this album has at least two good fire songs the jim Ooh, the Simon song at the beginning and the acdc song right after it those are both <laughs> great fire songs so the thing about heavens on fire that i do like is that it's um it's about diablo 3 which is a game i enjoyed a lot um <laughs> and then later on in the album at some point uh paul uh uh claims that he's going 69 miles per hour and then it goes into like one of one of the worst guitar solos i've ever heard and i was like this album is good <laughs> <laughs> I remember I have that in my notes. So he's like, let's hit the highway doing 69. Like, yeah, four over the speed limit. Yeah. It's, so bad. <laughs> um, it's a sexual the thing. Speed of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting the highway. Going 420. Um, <laughs> that would have been. Schneider? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would be a better lyric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this album sounds like, um, it sounds like what I think of, or at least what I thought of until the last few years, like when I thought of eighties music, especially like in high school, I was like, oh, it all sounds like this and I'm not that into it. And, uh, oh, that's what this album was. It sure was. I like heavens on fire and I like the part where he goes 69 and that's <laughs> it. So you're saying Mark St. John isn't your favorite kiss guitarist. Uh, no, I would go as far as to say he is not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, strong words. Uh, Jamie, is Mark St. John your favorite Kiss guitarist? Uh, no. No, he's not. <laughs> no. Um, it's, 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 it's not a hot take. About it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hot take, is it? It's, it's not a hot take to say that Mark St. John is the worst of the Kiss guitarists, including all of the session guitarists they ever had. Like, all of them. He's just... <laughs> Yeah, he's just not good. The only reason, like, c can you imagine if he was allowed to um, go crazy on Heavens on Fire? Like, thank God they went, we're going to have at least one single on this album. Um, <laughs> don't, just, don't, don't do what you do. Don't do it. Like, just just don't. And then, you know, we, we, had, a, we, had, a, we had a great single because of that. I think Animalize is a, it's a, it's a funny album because um, it's, it's one that's obviously, like, on the, the lower end of the spectrum for quality Kiss albums, and largely because of Mark St. John, and part of it because Paul spent most of his time with his uh, flame at the time um, in Barbados, didn't he? Wasn't he just off shagging during the whole recording process, <laughs> leaving Eric Carr and um, Mark St. John to just get on with it with the producer? And Gene was, well, it was the 80s. No, I, nobody really knows what Gene was doing, do they? Um, you can watch the films and still not really know what Gene was doing. Um, but he was being creative in one way or another. I think there are some great songs. I think there are four songs on the album that I think are great. Um, yeah, Heavens on Fire is a classic, still in the set now. Um, not the best chorus on the album, because obviously Thrills in the Night has that. Um, so yeah, 
there's there's some great songs and there's some dreadful songs. I mean, it deserves it deserves being higher than bottom uh, for Burn Bitch Burn, really, doesn't it? Because <laughs> the audacity to put all of them parts together and go, <laughs> yep, this is a good song. It's just it's phenomenal. It's <laughs> uh, Gene's ambition shining through. But, <laughs> well, this is this is the Gene that I wanted on the 78 solo album. You know, the Gene that just writes down loads of, you know, how can I how can I write about anal sex, but not like in nothing to lose? How can I write it so that somebody goes, ah, oh, he's doing loads of really good anal metaphors here? Um, <laughs> and that's just like, like just 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 Gene and, Gene and Adam Mitchell in Electric Ladyland just going, can, can you come up with another another net? Hornet's Nest, brilliant, fucking great, <laughs> and boom, like just brilliant, brilliant. They should still play it live today. Uh. You know what? Uh, what? What are the other two good songs you had? You got uh, "Throws in the Night" and "Heaven's on Fire." What were the other two that you said were good? Yeah, so the me- the method that I actually used has failed me because I've just tried to look at it. But if I if I remember, I think I think it'll have been Thr- "Thrills in the Night," "Heaven's on Fire." I think I probably did put down "Burn Bitch Burn" as a good song just because I, it amuses me, and the chorus is pretty good. Like the the actual the the "Burn Bitch Burn" bit is quite good. Um, <laughs> But I, I really like I really like the album opener. Uh, I've had enough into the fire. I think it's great. Um, it it's like they've tried to do Exciter, but it wasn't as good. Um, yeah, those those would be my four. I think. All right. Uh, so Mike Walsh, after everyone has been shitting on this album, what are your thoughts on Analyze? Oh uh, yeah. So I mean, the the shit is excessive. Uh, the rank <laughs> is way too low. There's like at least three more albums that are like undoubtedly not as good as Analyze that we haven't even gotten to yet. Um, I will say, see, if I had to pick five consecutive Kiss albums, uh, again, another apocalyptic scenario where I can only pick five Kiss albums, but they have to be all in order, I would pick Lick It Up through Hot in the Shade. And out of that five album block, I would agree that Animalize is the weak spot. It's kind of weird because Lick It Up's before it, Asylum comes after it. I don't think the songwriting is as good on Animalize or the production. So it's just kind of in the middle. I'm like, what What happened here? But I mean, the Paul songs are awesome. Um, I, I like two of the Gene songs quite a bit. I don't even hate the other two Gene songs. I just think they're kind of two of his most boring with... Um, Murder in High Heels and Lonely is the Hunter. Like, they're okay. But I think out of all the shit that Gene gets, especially in the 80s, for just, like, being lazy and phoning it in, if I had to cite an example of that, I, I think it's the most prominent on Animal Eyes. Um, so, I mean, I definitely have it in the second half of all of the Kiss albums, but um, it's at least, like, five spots way too low. So I, I ranked it the, the highest of the panel. I gave it 14 points. Uh, part of it is uh, nostalgia in which uh, this, is, uh, this is great grinding music uh, when playing RPGs because it's just freaking speed metal. And that's just really, really fun for just mowing down hordes of Heartless and Kingdom Hearts while you've got Animal Eyes on in the background. Um, I actually like Mark St. John as a guitar player on this one album. I think it works for the material on this album and I'm glad they didn't let him play on Heavens on Fire essentially <laughs> um, because I think that song sounds better without his craziness but I think the rest of the album it gives it a fun identity I actually think production wise I would say this is better production than Asylum uh, but I think Asylum has better songs overall um, I, but I think um, I, I just I love the Paul songs on this album Um and uh, Burn Bitch Burn is fun, where it it amuses me and makes me smile every time I listen to it. And really, that's all you can ask for from Kiss. Like, does it amuse you and make you smile? Yes. Therefore, Burn Bitch Burn is a great Kiss song. Is it a great song? No. Is it a Gre- great Kiss song? Yes. Greg, I think you were supposed to be ranking these albums based on how good they were, not based on how hilarious they were. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, uh, we well, are recording this during Fump Fest, so I guess basing it on jokes is appropriate, but we're going to release I, it way afterwards. I, I, re- I, I think it's an important point that Greg's I... made there, though. Oh, it's a very important point that Greg's makes, because when we when we are, like, uh, us all here being Kiss fans, 
you know, you don't listen to, like, if you want to listen to serious music, you don't listen to Kiss, do you? I mean, I've got a Frank Zappa That's tattoo, nice. and if I want to listen to serious music, I will listen to Frank Zappa, or I'll listen to Steely Dan, or I'll listen to Johnny Mitchell. And if I just want to smile and lose myself in good old fashioned rock and roll, it's Kiss. Um, I didn't have Burn, Bitch, Burn Down as the other good song. It was Get All You Can Take. My bad. Sorry, guys. Uh, Greg, when you mentioned there that you like Marcus and John, um, I've just got a little question. Would you rather, um, would you like this album more if Vinnie Vincent was the guitarist or Bruce Kulick was the guitarist? Like, would you I, would you prefer the album over Marcus and John if either of those two were involved in this album? I mean, I know I, Bruce was, but... I think, honestly... I think this album works because of Mark St. John's weird style. I think his guitar tone and playing gives this album a unique identity in the catalog, where I think if it was Vinny playing these same songs, they wouldn't have let him go as crazy. And so I think this album would actually falter much more because of that. But I think because it is just so off-the-wall bonkers with the guitar playing, that's part of the fun of Animal Eyes, where I'm glad they didn't stick with it. But as a single listen... Like, it is a very fun album to consume in its entirety, aside from uh, Myrtle and High Heels, which is just like, thank God that's at the end so I can skip it. But uh, the rest of it, it's it's pretty fun. I have a great time with it. And so I, uh, for, you know, this ranking, I just based it off of how much I enjoy the albums as opposed to how good I think they are. Um, because if I just did it on how good I think they are, I think my ranking would have been really boring. Just like, okay, here's all the 70s kiss at the top. Like, nah, screw it. I'm, I'm going with my heart. And my heart says, Animalize, I have fun listening to you, you goofy, goofy, ridiculous album. <laughs> Any other comments on Animalize before we move on? Uh, Thrills in the Night has a good chorus. Yeah, it does. Great chorus. And I... I forget if I made comments on this album or not, but uh, uh, <laughs> I, that's really my only comment. I mean, I've had enough into the fire is a good song. Heaven's on fire was nice when I just saw him live. I Thrills think under the, the gun is, is a really place. fun song. I think it's great live. Um, just, you know, cool energy to it. Get all you can take, you know, great swagger to it. Burn yeah. bitch burn is, is really fun and goofy. Like it's a very fun song. The rest of the gene stuff is, I can I can sort of see giving that a thumbs down, but I think the Paul songs and Burn Bitch Burn are all fun, and you know this makes a really solid EP. Here's a potential hot take: I'll take Lonely as the Hunter over Burn Bitch Burn. That's a hot take. I'll get. That's a pretty hot take. No, see, I don't even think that's a hot take, even though I disagree with it. <laughs> well, but also he's a math rock nerd, so obviously <laughs> I'm a math rock nerd. Yeah, what? Yeah, uh, Steve mentioned that earlier. And as a non-musician, well, what is it? Noah? What did you mean by math rock on Lonely Is Honor? Oh, yeah, where's uh, the mathy bit? Well, uh, no, in the in remember. the episode, in the episode, Steve referred to it as remedial math rock. So, like, it's not quite <laughs> math right. rock, like they were trying. Uh, he's talking about the instrumental section, which is okay. it's it is one of the like. That's the shit I come to the lipstick panel for. That is a quote I have brought up to Greg multiple times. <laughs> in, Remedial in, math rock. It's That's so, so fucking funny. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> though they're... Well... It, that's still in four, though, right? That part? I'm trying to remember it. It's, I mean, it probably is. That's what yeah. makes it remedial. Well, there are like two, a... two Kiss albums with 7-8 on it. Ooh. 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 Uh, there's a kiss song. In, there's a kiss song with a thirteen eight bar as well. A bar Whoa, of thirteen wait, eight. Really? Which one? Yeah. Campfire House. <laughs> the solo section with this. Campfire Count. House. Count Firehouse. Oh, Sorry, it was, it was my, I thought you said point. Camp Firehouse. I thought it was like a <laughs> demo or something. Camp Firehouse. <laughs> yeah. It was Sorry, the folks. Was a, was a, was a, uh, Kiss collaboration. Yeah, was, 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 a, was yeah. a proper English accent. Difficult to hear there. We're all speaking English here, and only one of us is actually English, so come on. <laughs> you don't have to be massive xenophobes. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a meme uh, that was like, uh, you know, pick your language, and one said... Um, English and parentheses traditional. There was uh, uh, the Union Jack, and then one said uh, English, uh, you know, beginner. And then there was a United States flag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's well, the trick with that, though. Is like uh, I was I was reading about this. Apparently, there's some linguistic research showing that um, when 
you have a group of people who speak the same language and one subset of that group moves away from the original location that the group lived in, the people who left don't change their language as much. The people who have stayed in the same place, their language evolves faster. So apparently American English actually pronunciation wise an American English accent sounds pretty close to a Shakespearean English accent. Take that, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I bite my thumb at you. <laughs> so any other comments on Animal All right. Remedial, remedial math rock, just like an <laughs> all-time great, hilarious <laughs> moment from podcasting history. One of the all-time greats. Classics. Like I, I was listening. I think I remember exactly where I was walking when I was listening to that, and I had to like stop and sit down, and I messed up. <laughs> All right. Well, up on the list, we've got. Um, I ranked the second from the bottom, so just one step above Jigoku, we've got Sonic Boom. That's on the list. This list is so much bullshit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is like one spot below where I put it. Oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, Mike, you ranked this the highest uh, incorrectly, so why don't you tell us about why you're wrong about this album that everyone else agrees is mad to bad. I don't even know what it be. I'm much like Victor needed a moment to just stop when he heard remedial math rock. I just I feel like I need a a, a breath um, at the insanity here. Um, I I don't expect. I, I mean, I put it at number eight, so I have it in the top ten. I don't need everyone to have it in the top ten, but oh man, uh, where it is at the is bottom. just insanely low. Um, we we haven't talked about music from the other yet. We haven't talked about Carnival of Souls yet. We haven't talked They're about the Peter, we haven't what talked about the Peter Chris solo album yet. We haven't <laughs> talked about Psycho Circus yet. I mean, well, Sonic Boom is a better <laughs> Sonic Boom is a better Kiss album than all of those. Um, but is it a better album? Okay, it's a better Kiss album than all of those. It's definitely a better album than Music from the Elder. Um, Not according to this panel, sir. I mean, this uh, you're going to take that insane. sound over a Bob Ezrin production. <laughs> I mean, first of all, Mike, I mean, I'm going to tell you this right now. We've got a ways to go before we get to music. <laughs> <from you. laughs> <That's>, it, which <laughs> is insane. Yeah, five, that, that's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> uh, production isn't the sole element of an album. I, I think no, it no, comes no. into play. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily love the sound of music from the other. To be honest, like it's good but i don't well, let's let's talk about the one we're but, on right now let's just focus yeah, on why sonic um, is bad and you're wrong i mean sonic boom is just a fun album it was a return to kiss they hadn't you know i mean so psycho circus i mean psycho circus is okay i guess it's pretty low but like sonic boom was a way more kissish album um it was just a return to that fun kiss sound it had been 11 years I, to put it this low it's insane i i mean i don't, I don't know what to tell you i don't know what to say i mean obviously i'm not going to change anyone's mind so this is just insanity right now. <laughs> I think the fundamental issue with this entire episode is we've got Mike, who's a true Kiss fan, and then the rest of us weirdos. <laughs> so Mike represents I like how you the don't real even consider, consensus. I like how you don't consider me or Jamie real Kiss fan. Nah. <laughs> well, <only> me. <laughs> I'm on the Kiss FAQ only. before. I was on the Kiss FAQ podcast once. <laughs> so was I. Yeah, I, I was a, a, a trivia contestant on a trivia episode they did. We're real Kiss fans. <laughs> nah, uh -huh. so yeah, keep telling yourself is, that. It's hard Ooh. to be a fan of your own work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see, who ranked at Nets lowest? Uh, Jamie, Jamie, so you gave this 13 points, so you probably are more favorable towards it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, when, when Mike, um, I, I can't remember the direct quote, but it was something like, how are people ranking this um, lower than uh, Peter Chris, Carnival of Souls, um, Psycho Circus, etc.? Like, I ranked it higher than those. Like, I, I think, I do think it's a good album. There are, I, I think there are seven good Kiss songs on this album, which for Kiss is really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, I, you know, Say Yeah is a, Phenomenal song. Like it's a really, really, really to know that Paul Stanley I love is Poison still writing by Alice song. Cooper. Exactly. Yeah, Poison by Alice <laughs> Cooper is such a great track. I also love Nothing But a Good Time. That's also a great song that's on this album. <laughs> I see what we do. I see what we're doing here, chaps. But let, let's be honest. <laughs> let, let's be honest. If if you've if you've read um, Kiss 
uh, as a kiss behind the behind the mask, the authorized biography that came out. Like yeah. every song, every song from the nineteen seventy, like from se- uh, seventy four to seventy nine, it's kind of like, oh yeah, so we ripped off this humble pie song, we ripped off this mountain song. So what they, they did ripped a off better Alice job Coop- of hiding it. They did a better job of hiding it with those songs, mm, and they weren't uh, as good players, so they just played it wrong, and then they're like, it's a new song. <laughs> I, I think "Say Yeah" is a better song than um, the the Poison song that you that you're referencing. I think it's then, great. Then "Poison" by Alice Cooper. Uh, maybe not better than "Poison" by Alice Cooper. Yeah, but "Poison" by Alice Cooper. So "Poison" by Alice Cooper versus "Say Yeah." That's the ripoff. The Alice Cooper song is better. "Nothing But a Good Time" versus "Never Enough." "Nothing But a Good Time" has a better hook. Uh, I disagree. I'd go with no, "Never Enough." Yeah, over, over "Nothing But a yeah. Good Time." Monday Delilah's great. Russian Roulette's great. Um, I really like Stand. I, I, I know that's like a really contentious... I think that's a contentious point as a Kiss fan because most people think it's a, it's absolutely trash. Well, it's uh, a terrible cover. never won that episode. It's a terrible um, cover. Yeah, the R.E.M. version <laughs> is much better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but you it, just bit, the original. It makes me, <laughs> makes me feel really happy. same energy. And you know, Dangerous is a return to form for Gene. Great yeah, song. I, I mean, there's, um, you know, I'll go ahead and go next. Um, even though I ranked at the lowest, we'll go back and forth. Um, <laughs> I think that this album, it feels more formulated and and formulaic and calculated than almost any other release in the catalog. Um, and because of that, it's um, it, it comes off as very boring to me. Um, there's not enough of Tommy's distinct style as a player on this album where every time someone new joined Kiss, you really got to feel their distinct personality as a player. As That's someone who was that. a fan of Tommy's work before this album, uh, he's just doing an ace invitation because I listened to all his Black and Blue albums. I loved him in Black and Blue. He's not being himself on this. He is mimicking ace uh, yeah but song, greg he's been recording with kiss for 18 years prior you heard him on the street giveth the street take of the way play like tommy there like you know he's been in the band for 18 years at this yeah, point but, it's not new but he had he had you know look uh what well, i did he record that or just co-write it i think that is him played i'm i'm being a dick like i'm not i'm not being serious like i agree <laughs> like the fact that he's like he's, he's wheeling out cliche ace freely parts i do think it is disappointing sonic boom i do prefer his playing it on monster and live i was I was just being a dick. I was making okay. jokes. <laughs> I, just, I, I was just, making yeah. jokes. But um, but I th- I think you know there are some good songs in here. But it just it comes off as very uh like I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad album. I don't think there's a bad album in the catalog aside from Jigoku Retsuden. Um, but it's just kind of a boring album, and the songs aren't good enough to like maintain my interest. Uh, aside from a couple tracks, like All for the Glory, I think is great. I think um. Modern Day Delilah might be the best Kiss video because it really encompasses an entire Kiss show in a single music video. So even though I'm not too hot in the song, because there's it's just a an amalgamation of other Kiss songs that they've done better. Yeah. It's you know it's it's not a bad album. They're playing well. They're performing well. There's some cool stuff on here, but it just feels it feels very boring and formulaic, and so it just doesn't do much for me as a listen. Uh, Gavin, you ranked it Nets lowest. Actually, you know, uh, Victor ranked it Nets lowest. So, Victor, why uh, does this uh, rank lower than Gene Simmons 78 for you? Well, one of the problems was that they um, made it difficult for me to get, and I wasn't about to shell out however much money required to <laughs> get a copy of this album. Um, and I had to listen to it on a very inconsistent YouTube rip. <laughs> um, so I don't actually know how this album sounds. But... <laughs> Um, the songs are mostly not that interesting, except for Dangerous, which is so stupid, I have to respect it. <laughs> um, yeah, you respect Dangerous? Oh, sorry, Victor, go ahead. I, did, I didn't realize you were still going. My apologies. I don't think I, I, don't think I was. <laughs> I, think, I think I was done. <laughs> I think I was done. So, uh, Gavin... Cause... <laughs> uh, I, already, I already brought up the stand thing so that, that was the only other thing I really had to say on it Gavin get your jokes in this album well I don't this this is not a joke uh, this album is a life support system for Iron Animal uh, which is the one uh, interesting <laughs> song on the album um, no that's not the interesting song on the album that's the most like Gene has to have an evil song 
Here it's, it is. Yeah, it's it's. I I like the knockoff God of Thunders, almost human, and and I'm an animal. Devil is me, not so much. That's that's pretty shit. But um, uh, no, I think I'm an animal is a great song, and that's and an why accurate statement. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Uh, and, and that's why, uh, cause it, it generally, it, it's in that part of my list. I, I put it at number 21, so I only gave it what five points, four points, but, um, uh, it's in that part of my list where there's one or zero songs that I like on it. And this one has one that I mm. like can honestly say that I like, and it's, I'm an animal. <laughs> Other than that, I, I, it's just, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, heritage rock at its finest. Ooh, harsh. <laughs> oh, I, I thought of another thing. Uh, they should have called him Eric Drummer. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And uh, Steve, you ranked this right in the middle of uh, all of us panelists. Any thoughts yeah. on it? Do you remember? I mean, it? I ranked it one below Jamie. So uh, this is. I think overall a pretty middling album to me. Um, uh, just like the worst thing about it was the fact that they did a song called Hot and Cold that was even worse than the Katy Perry one. <laughs> and the best things about it were Stand and Say Yeah, which were pretty decent knockoffs of contemporary songs. And then the rest of it was pretty meh. So yeah, it's right in the middle of everything for me. I probably could have bumped it lower if I'd wanted to. Probably should have put it below the Gene 78 solo, but just right in the middle of the list around here, I'm like, I don't remember anything and <laughs> I don't care to actually listen to all of the Kiss discography again. At least they were consistent. Did any rock band put a decent album out in 2008? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Eight. Yeah, let's find a list of 2008 rock albums. Right? There'll be 14 projects with Dave Grohl in them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So right. those, will all be, those will all be decent. Oh, um, Smashing Pumpkins put out American Gothic that year. Oh, yeah. Great so there was like that. good. <laughs> well, that's an EP, though. Oh, Teenage Bottle Rocket put out an album, which sounds like a Teenage Bottle Rocket album, I'm sure. So if you like Teenage Bottle Rocket, decent. I'm sure there was something good that came out in 2008. Oh, oh uh, everyone's going to disagree with me, so I don't know why I'm saying it, but... Um, Take it, to the, take it to the Limit by Hinder came out in 2008. And I... Uh, we know, that was 2009. Why, why are we talking about 2008? Oh, oh yeah, because Sonic Boom was 2009. Yeah, way, uh, yeah. Two, and so, yeah, and, yeah 2009. Yeah, never mind. Uh, oh, yeah, no, there was no good 21st Century album. Breakdown by Green Day. Ow. No, I'm mm. kidding. That's, I mean, it came out that year, but it is a terrible <laughs> album. <laughs> oh, Master, Master Don released Crack the Sky. That's a really good album. Oh, yeah. That's a really real big good fish album. released an album, which I'm sure sounds like every real big fish album. <laughs> Napalm <laughs> Death and Sepultura Joe both put out albums. Look, oh, I, I saw Napalm Death last year. Very we had good. just gotten into a recession. No one was happy. The world <laughs> was terrible. No one was releasing good music. But hey, um, um, Cannibal Corpse put out an album now, that guys. year. Yeah, yeah, things are finally uh, Rob good. Rob Thomas put out an album called Cradle Song. So you know we got. We got that, In, including a song. Track six on that album is called "Real World 09. Oh shit! Oh my god! And track eleven is called "Snowblind." Incredible bad. The, uh, the, the cover? Long Island album came out that year. <laughs> Muse so released an album where they tried to sound like Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that narrows it down for people. doing one that sounded like Radiohead. <laughs> so, do we have yeah. any other comments on Sonic Boom before we move on? It wasn't uh, as good I'll, as I'll Invaders go Must Die, which also came out that year. I'll go to oh. the bat for Stand. I like Stand um, as kind of the the uh, the opposite side of the spectrum from You Wanted the Best on Psycho Circus. It's you wanted it's, the worst. Well, no, it's it's <laughs> instead of the it's not the hey we're all feuding, but we're here because you want us to be here. It's Gene and I are brothers. And Gene and I get along. Gene and I get along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, this album uh, induces my least favorite Paul Stanley stage rap, which um, for those that have seen him, induces. when it, to introduce to introduce um, say yeah, he always goes. This one comes off Sonic Boom. 
boom, boom, boom. It's just stop. Stop, old man. Play. I, I uh, <laughs> When I saw the End of the Road tour, a friend of mine came with me who had who listened to Destroyer once in middle school because I made him. Um, and that was his sole experience with Kiss. Like, he didn't know that Gene was going to spit blood, that kind yeah. of level. Didn't even get to listen to the good album. Yeah. <laughs> but but he, uh, he, he was genuinely confused when it got to the boom thing. Uh, <laughs> he didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I'll, ju- I'll just leave it at that. Oh, yeah, uh, and KMFDM's Blitz came out that year. That's a solid album. KMFDM is a band that people I know are into. This is a pointless sentence. I don't know why I started it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, so the we're, Chicken we're, Foot we're, album came out. Sorry. Oh, we're talking yeah. about Sonic Boom and done talking about other okay at best albums. Speaking of okay oh, at Spoon best albums. Silver Sun Pickups. That album kicks ass. Black Clouds and Silver Linings by Dream Theater. Ooh. Sorry. Speaking of mediocrity, next up on the yeah. list is Monster. <laughs> uh, Mike Walsh, uh, you gave this 23 points out of a possible 25. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so, fifth from the I, bottom is Monster. How are you doing, buddy? I mean, at this point, how can I be surprised? I mean, Sonic Boom is way too low. Um, Monster is a better album than Sonic Boom, so I... I I'm not that surprised that it, you know, ranked one above in the sense that, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the two. So, you know, I guess once uh, Sonic Boom was in its place, I had a good feeling Monster was next. Um, I don't really have much else to say in terms of, you know, how absurd that is. How many more, <laughs> how many more worse albums like we have yet to talk about? Um, <laughs> But much like I said on the on the Monster uh, podcast itself, it's just a very fun Kiss album to me. Um, picks up where Sonic Boom left off, but I think it's more adventurous than Sonic Boom. I think they tried a few more things on Sonic Boom um, and then they did on Sonic Boom. Um, it's just awesome. And, and, and I fully believe, I mean, I ranked it third. Uh, out of all the Kiss albums, I ranked it third. That kind of sounds insanely high. Um, Will I feel differently in 20 years? I might. But it's not like it's the (laughs) new album. It's not like it's their new album. It's been out for eight years. So it's not just new album buzz that I have either. I don't know. Again, ranking them as Kiss albums in terms of songs that like really do it for me and just really pure enjoyment, I ranked it that high because as much as I love and respect other albums that I put below it, it just gives me an enjoyment. Um that is almost unrivaled in their catalog other than two albums that I put above it. And so all of you can hate it, but all of you can go die. I always thought the Crazy Crazy Mike name was because of, you know, your love for Crazy Nights, which I'm sure we'll get on later, but evidently it's for your opinions <laughs> on Kiss albums. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> I mean, no. That, 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 well done, Jamie. I'm not even. I'm not even offended by your I joke. Can't the air that, <laughs> that would. But the, the thing is, these these burns don't even have meaning at this point, guys. Do you realize <laughs> we haven't talked about music from the Elder, Carnival of Souls, Peter Chris, or Psycho Circus yet? I mean, <laughs> this panel means nothing. <laughs> is this a jo- I feel like I'm being recorded. This is why you guys wanted me to turn my video on because I feel like I'm being recorded for a prank show. This is insane. <laughs> You're out of order. You're out of order. This whole panel is out of order. <laughs> I mean, I'll concede that Monster at number three is kind of probably too high, but but y'all got to concede that you're full of shit too. I put it in the middle, so I'm only full of a little shit. I'm only half full of shit. And that's why you're my best friend, because out yeah. of all of you, you're the least full of shit. <laughs> also, side note, speaking of 2009, uh, the Sun album, uh, Monoliths and Dimensions came out, so great music came out that year. Sorry, I'm still on that Wikipedia page. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll actually, I'll go next. Um, so I gave this seven points. So I actually ranked it significantly higher than Monster. i uh, sorry, sorry, than Sonic Boom. Uh, I think this is actually a good album. I think it's got some great songs. It feels much more sincere, organic. It doesn't feel as labored over and forced as Sonic Boom. So Sonic Boom felt very forced. This felt like going out into the studio, banging out some songs, having fun. And, um, like, there's some, you know, great Kiss classics on here. Uh, Take Me Down Below, 
perhaps the magnum opus of the Kiss catalog, um, really should have closed out the album. I think that would have been the absolute best note to end out the discography on. Uh, would have been Take Me Down Below. Um, All for the Love of Rock and Roll. Great song. Um, honestly, those two songs alone made this worth the price of admission. Back to the Stone Age, also great. Like, it's a fun listen, and like the entire thing just comes off as very fun and comes off as a band enjoying making music. So this this works for me in the way that Sonic Boom doesn't. I I really like it. Boo! <laughs> Gavin, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, it's it's uh, bad songs produced badly to the effect that it made a bad album. It's <laughs> it's bad. I put it third from the bottom in, in my own. Uh, personal ranking so i'm i'm you could i'm directly on the other end of the uh of the uh poll than than mike he put it three from the top i put it uh, three from the bottom um just above jigoku uh red sudan um because it's bad <laughs> and that, honestly that's that's about all i have i mean uh if i had to say one positive about it uh Whenever I listen to Hell or Hallelujah, I think about just those little clips in isolation used on uh, episodes of Pot of Thunder, and that makes me smile. <laughs> uh, Hell or Hallelujah, another great song. <laughs> I've got those drops in here somewhere. Maybe it's this one. <laughs> no, we're not on that album yet. <laughs> yeah, take that, Fair Frog. <laughs> uh, so, Victor, you put this... Um, Second from the bottom. So all three of the Tommy and Eric albums you ranked at the bottom of your list. Uh, why is Modern Kiss so terrible? So the thing about it, it's honestly like a lot of my notes here are honestly very positive. Like there are things that I like about Tommy's playing on this album in particular. Like some of the like the solos I think are good. And like the, the tone of his guitar I think sounded good. And like there's a wah solo somewhere in there that I liked. Um, I It's just like. So, you know, uh, you you go through the whole discography in chronological order and you're kind of like, man, this Paul guy, he's getting better and better. And like he he can sing, he can really sing. And you start to feel connected to him because, you you know, he sings all these songs about like his naked emotions and just like his naked self, I imagine, in there, too. And just like <laughs> he's really letting his soul hang out for like decades and decades all in a row. And then to have them like callously record him being strangled to death on this album. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really upsetting. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's kind of all I had. <laughs> I think that was uh, up there with a medial math rock is uh, <laughs> I'm a, in this podcast history. Uh, Jamie, how did you feel about Paul Stanley being uh, strangled to get death on recording? Um, like, is that a is that a kink that you're into? Well, judging by Paul's like '80s output, I think there was you know some strangling going on during the time. But I think it was <laughs> I, I think it was much more it was much more akin to his image on the back of the Crazy Nights cover. I think. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, the way that he would wear his chest pubes out all the time. Um, yeah, I think Monsters are a, a lesser of the albums in the Kiss catalogue. I think there are some good songs on there, but it's been brick-walled, and that makes the album quite unlistenable, which is a shame, uh, because it's, you know, it's just so fatiguing to listen to. But, yeah, it's got to take me down below on there, which is probably their best anthem since 1987, in my opinion. I don't think... Um, Post turn on the night, I don't think they released an anthem. They had an anthem on record as good as Take Me Down Below. It's phenomenal. More of that, please. I don't like Back to the Stone Age. Those explosion sound effects wind me up. Um, they're just, they're so stupid. And I think you're right, Greg, in that, you know, Sonic Boom sounds really calculated. And Monsters sounds like um, the, the four of them just got in the studio and and bashed like an album out and uh, that's very reflective in Gene's songs because it's back to woeful Gene as opposed to you know Gene making an effort because he's told he has to 
Um, <laughs> so, some good songs, some bad, bad mastering. Uh, um, yeah, great euphemisms on Take Me Down Below. And uh, Steve, you put this um, in the middle. Do you remember what this one sounds like? It was the last one we did. <laughs> uh, right. Um, as I recall, uh, I basically put it right in the middle because... Wait, we're talking about Monster, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so my notes on this said this is the most middling of their albums. There's nothing terrible, but there's nothing truly good. You know, right here, right now, and the devil is in me are pretty fine. So, yeah, let's put it in the middle, I suppose. That seems as good a place as any. So, uh, Mike I'm also looking through the list of, of albums from 2009 again, and... Most of them are very mediocre. That was a very mediocre year for music. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you need two Family Force 5 albums? Because that was what you got. <laughs> um, I have another statement on this one that I know Greg will disagree with. Uh, R.E.M. did it better. Uh, look, I... Did you did you watch that video on Patreon finally? I still haven't. <laughs> As I said, we need a, we need a night where we know it'll be safe for us to be mad. We just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, look, they didn't have that high of a bar to cross. Like, I enjoy this album, but it would have been very easy for an R.E.M. album to surpass Monster. Uh, they just didn't. Uh, I, look, I'll give you this. I like Reveal better than Monster. <laughs> but uh, Unfortunately, I, so do I. <laughs> but also... <laughs> yeah, but, also, I, Victor, at least you know that that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyway, we're moving on from Monster. Next up on the list, the one spot above Monster. <laughs> Great song. I'm sorry? What's the frequency Kenneth is a classic and better than anything on Kiss's Monster? <laughs> You're wrong. Anyway, so uh, mm -hmm. one step up above Monster and two steps up above Sonic Boom, we've got Carnival of Souls, the final <laughs> sessions. Next up <laughs> on the list, uh, Mike Walsh. How are you feeling about uh, Carnival of Souls beating out Monster and Sonic Boom? I mean, it's not as good as either, but, you know. I mean, it's also it's... only two spaces where, from where you put it. Right, exactly. That, that's why I'm less like, what the fuck this time around? Because, I mean, uh, Carnival of Souls is tough for me because I'm always like, yeah, that's the worst or one of the worst Kiss albums. You know, over the past 20 years, you know, on and off, I it kind of has shifted with one or two others back and forth. But every time I listen to it, I'm like, I'm really enjoying myself right now. Not exactly in the same fun way that I really want from Kiss. That's why it's near the bottom for me. But I think it's a very well done album of, of cool and interesting music. Um, so I have a lot of respect for it. Um, having, I mean, honestly, if it was in the spot it's in, I could live with that. The, the three of the albums below it are insane. <laughs> but there are some other albums that you could put below it where I'd be like, eh, I disagree, but I can tolerate that at least. Um, so, yeah. So you're saying you don't necessarily uh, disagree with the spot that's in, but there's just like exactly. a Exactly. The spot is okay. The the things that are below it are, are absurd, but <laughs> I know, the spot but Gene Simmons okay. totally shouldn't. <laughs> Gene Simmons totally but, shouldn't be below this. But, um,. <laughs> It's it's a it's a cool album for what it is. Low low, I guess, for a kiss album, like good for just a nineties rock album. Um very good actually. I would say it is better than a lot of nineties rock music. Uh so Jamie, you actually ranked this the lowest out of all of us. Uh you put mm -hmm. this second from the bottom. Um so I cede the floor to you. Yeah, so um I, I did um I, I created a spreadsheet to work out uh, what my bottom would be because I wanted to be fair, but I, st I still think that there are four good songs on this album. So that goes to show like how, even though it ranks as my bottom kiss album, if we don't class Jagoku as a kiss album, um, there are still four songs on it that I like. And kind of M Mike mentioned kind of a, a similar thing to how I feel about the album, which is that there are loads of songs on this album that make me feel pumped when I listen to it. And yeah, it's not what I want from a kiss album when I want to listen, when I want to, put on a kiss album i want to hear like mr speed or making love or the rest of rock and roll over um <laughs> but um carnival of souls still has some really cool songs on it i mean like rain's great jungle's great i confess is great i really like i walk alone as well um i don't really like the songs where paul's talking about how shite his life is when he's a multi-millionaire 
Um, and, you know, the carols probably still hang around. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's not what I reach to often. But when I do, I'm like, oh, yeah, do you know what? There are some good songs on this. And even though I don't like Gene's songs that much on this, it's a better contribution from Gene than a lot of his 80s output because it actually sounds like he means what he's going on about. That's uh, that's fair. So, um, Victor, you ranked it the Nets lowest. Uh, what are your thoughts on Carnival of Souls, the final sessions? So this is another one that's kind of on that line of like, I, there's good stuff here, but we're kind of veering into bad album territory. <laughs> and um, I think one of the problems, and this is a problem I have with a lot of albums I've heard, is it is one hour long. And mm. that's just that's just really long. I've got other things to do. Another <laughs> problem is that um, in my notes, I very frequently went got this album and Psycho Circus confused because they're the same title to me. <laughs> and so I think, I mean, that was actually a very difficult day when I figured out I had done that <laughs> because I had to go through and make sure all of the songs were in the right section so I could talk about them. And then at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter because all I'm going to say is, uh, it sounds like Paul doesn't think this album sounds good, except that he has all of the good songs, so it's really weird. <laughs> oh, but I can tell he's like, he hates how the 90s sound, and that's very funny to me. <laughs> so you're just uh, like, oh man, this guy is really a professional, and that's a bummer for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but like, Honestly, there's, I, I respect there's a, that take. There's there's like a good 40 minute album in there. It's just it's an hour. That's that's a, that's a fair statement. Um so Steve, you actually ranked this uh Nets highest, which I'm surprised how high you ranked this because you were very negative on this one during the episode, more negative than probably any other uh Kiss episode we've done, probably because it's a 90s uh, grunge album and just you have to have negativity and angst uh right. cuz them's the rules. <laughs> so angsty. Yeah, I mean this is probably one of the more disappointing albums in that, like, after the previous album hinting at a bunch of Angry Gene songs, when they actually did a bunch of Angry Gene songs, it wasn't good, and that made me sad. So my overall takeaway of this is, that, like, the lows on this aren't particularly low, it's just it doesn't have highs that are any good. So, all in all, as I said in that album, or in, the, in that episode, I think, I would rather listen to this album than anything by Alice in Chains, who they were clearly aping, but given my druthers, I wouldn't listen to either. <laughs> so, if we did, like, an Alice in Chains ranking in the somewhere in here, it would be somewhere below Carnival of Souls, but maybe not uh, below all of the Kiss discography. And uh, Gavin, you ranked it the next highest, the highest aside from me. So what are your thoughts on Carnival of Souls? Um, you know, there's that scene in family-type movies where the older brother wants to go out and play, and the parents say, <laughs> okay, but take your younger brother with you, and the older brother goes, oh, mom, and then they go off and they play. Gene's the older brother in this scenario. This really, uh, Gene and Bruce should have formed a band and called it Carnival of Souls or, or, or call know, it the like final that. sessions or call it the final sessions. And it should have just been those two guys exploring what they viewed as, you know, modern rock at that time. I think all of, all of Gene's songs while, you know, cause I put this fairly in the middle, so it's not. It's not a kiss hill that I'm prepared to die on, or it's also not, you know, I'm not going to push really hard one way or the other. Um, I just think that that Gene, like the Gene songs on this, generally work for me. In in that I think this is the Gene that parts of asshole were trying to be like weapons of mass destruction, stuff like that. And it works on Carnival of Souls because Bruce is there to write good songs. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Paul's stuff, to me, it, it, it felt like 
he was tasked much in the way that that hard luck woman was him trying to write a rod stewart song and that song is brilliant uh he tried to write what he viewed as like Alice in Chains, Smashing Pumpkins, da, 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 stuff like that. And f- to me, for Paul, it doesn't work. And then he somehow forced the I will be there onto this because, you know, everything had to have, you know, the, the, exactly. Yeah, that that it had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just well, I was realizing as I was saying that no one can see what we did, but we uh, uh, Jamie on his camera made a fist and brought it towards his chest very uh, dramatically. Uh, and that, you know, that kind of Paul Stanley power ballad, which uh, to me very rarely works. Uh, I also like, it, it's, it's, it's Gene Simmons going, hey, things are kind of spooky in, you know, there's, there's satanic and, and like uh, kind of stuff going on here. I'm going to reference some movies and books that I like. Because like Carnival of Souls is a is a, an amazing uh, uh, horror film from the 60s. Childhood's End is an Arthur C. Clarke book. Uh, Seduction I've got Steve's of... copy behind me right now. Ah, there you go. Yeah. And, uh, not that great point. of a book. Also, Carnival of Souls wasn't that good of a movie. Oh, you can, <laughs> you can fuck right off, Steve. Are we talking about the same, the same movie? Like the old black and Like black she and dies one. in a car wreck in scene one? Well, I mean, you can't... Spoilers. Play the... Whole you can't spoil a film. movie that's like from 50 plus years well, ago. But also that very few people I feel like have seen. It's not like spoiling Planet of the Apes or Citizen Kane, right? You know, uh, yeah. But also Seduction of the Innocent. Yeah, you'd be spoiling good movies. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not enjoy Carnival of Souls when I saw it. I was like, what is the point of this movie? You should watch it again. It's really good. Um, <laughs> and I'd have to fish out my copy. Yeah. This time you'll from- like it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Seduction of the Innocent was a book about the evils of comic books done in the 30s. It's it's why we had the comic books code, which is why Batman was so silly throughout the 60s in the comics. The TV show's fucking brilliant and silly, but brilliant. Um, yeah, so I, I, it's got a lot of nice Gene references that, uh, you know... That have nothing to do with the source material he's referencing? Oh, of course, yeah. Any <laughs> Gene ref- no Gene reference is like, yeah, if he... If he if you took the melody of Childhood's End and actually wrote out the story of Childhood's End and had Gene Simmons sing it, that would be amazing. Um, <laughs> You'd have the Reg Darn the Fighter songs, Childhood's End, part one and two. You wouldn't actually have those. My songs are much better than Gene's. <laughs> also, I will say there is a much better album called Carnival of Souls by... Oop, I tapped my mic. Uh, by the band Perubu. Are anyone Perubu fans over here? Uh, did Victor it come out in 2009? Because if not, I don't care. Those are the only <laughs> albums I've listened to. Hang on. You know what? Uh, <laughs> uh, let me look it up. But yeah, Per Ubu's Carnival of Souls is uh, a much... Oh, no. 2014. Never mind. I was way There off. was a much better song called Carnival of Souls on the Gene Simmons asshole solo album. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that Richie Cotton guitar solo is absolutely brilliant. I mean, Richie Cotton's great. What, what's, I, well, what's funny about that, though, with, with the kind of title track, I'm glad it was brought up, is that I hope, in, in my mind, Gene had that written during the Carnival of Souls, the final sessions, and one day brought it in. Like, they'd been doing all this miserable shit, down-tuned, like, heavy, the world's terrible riffs for the Carnival of Souls sessions. And then one day, he walks in with Carnival of Souls, the song, and goes, what do you think about this, lads? And Paul probably walks out. Paul's like, I can't believe you're making me do Alice in Chains songs, and then you've brought this in. <laughs> Side note, you can watch Carnival of Souls for free on Wikipedia. Oh, it's a public domain, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it's public P- domain. It's just, I just find film. it funny yeah. that Wikipedia has the entire film embedded on their site. <laughs> um, I also, I, I wish this album got like a legit release, because could you imagine a tour for this album? Could you imagine like opening a show with like, I Stole hate. Your Love... And then going into hate, and then like doing like heavens on fire right after that, and then you know childhood's end followed by uh, under the gun or like in my head and uh, crazy nights like <laughs> just such a, that would have been amazing. Mike Walsh's head is exploding right now. <laughs> it would have been amazing to watch them try and I mean, navigate yeah. how to fit 
that vibe in with general like you know everything's party awesome you know happy uplifting kiss Party yeah, misogyny. I think that would have been. <laughs> could, party, can you misogyny? imagine Paul trying to break down a crowd in the middle of jungle to get them to sing along? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. Could you imagine uh, them on on unplugged? Jungle would have a drum solo. That would be the hundred thousand years of the night. There you go. Could you imagine them breaking out? Uh, I'll be. I will be there uh, on unplugged with the string uh, section. <laughs> <laughs> I will be there would have been on uh, the symphony concerts. Oh, yeah, you're fucking right. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to go next. Um, so I gave this 21 points. So I single handedly <laughs> elevated this one up. <laughs> um, basically, if it wasn't for me, this would have probably come in second from the bottom. Um, but because of uh, that big Greg energy. Uh, straight up to the spot that it's in. Yeah, this is a top five Kiss album for me. Um, I absolutely love it. I think the, I think the Paul songs are really great. Like I love Rain. I think Master and Slave would have been a strong single and would have gone over well live in the Imaginary Kiss tour of this era. Um, I like I will be there a lot, and I think Jungle is like a, a top tier Kiss song. Like I think that's the kind of song where if it got the proper push, uh, you know, if you did like a video for it. Could have been a concert staple. Could have been a song that appeared on greatest hits albums. Like, could have done really well for the band if this album, you know, got its proper release. I think the Gene songs are very sincere and prob and maybe like the most consistent like Gene output on a single album ever. Um, in, in terms of like you know the emotion and heart and being invested in every song, I think that it's a it's a very sincere focus. Gene, I think the songs are strong. Uh, lyrically and musically, I, I do like sedu sed Seduction of the Innocent, and I love I Walk Alone. Uh, I love that Bruce Kulick got a vocal in the Kiss catalog, and I love that it ends on an optimistic note. I think that is a great conclusion to this album, a great finale to Bruce's tenure in Kiss, and it you know it makes it feel magical. It, it has that Kiss magic in there, and so um, wow, it's so different for the band it still has the magic that the band has. And so it works for me. I absolutely love this album. It's also one of the two Kiss albums to have 7-8 on it. <laughs> or 7-4, I suppose, in the tune. It's uh, one of the Paul tunes. Uh, Is that Rain? Rain, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but for me, like, this album completely works. I It has... Uh, it has the magic, and what it also has is that it's it's them taking a big swing, and I I'd rather have Kiss take big swings and miss than to just be formulaic and boring. And so, if you're gonna take a big swing, go for it. And like, there's still some great songs on here, so this works for me. If if we're praising Kiss for taking big swings, why is Gene Simmons second from the fucking bottom? <laughs> um, because, because it's a bad album. Big swings, big misses. <laughs> it's in but, my top ten, the Gene Simmons. It's number nine for me. Yeah, I don't, Chris. I, yeah, but this is a, a great album, elevated solely by me. So, Mike, if you're upset that this ranks higher than Monster and Sonic Boom, you can single-handedly blame me, blame Bear Frog. For oh, that. I'd, I'd like to blame you, and obviously you you insanely overrate Carnival of Souls, but I, I can't really blame you for the improper placement of Monster and Sonic Boom. I think that was more of a, a group thing of <laughs> just y'all took a bunch of LSD or something. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, any other comments on Carnival of Souls before we move on? The Perubu album is better. <laughs> yeah, while we were bringing up um, different things that were better, there's the better movie, there's the better album. It's like, I remember towards the end of my childhood, I went to an actual Carnival of Souls, and it was much better than this album. <laughs> <laughs> right near your childhood's end? Yeah, that's right. What is an actual Carnival of Souls? Don't know, but uh, uh, Paul could do like his side project and do a Halloween release called uh, Carnival of Soul Station, couldn't he? Jokes. Yes. Well, and they could do. They could go to a seance, or what did you go to? They could team up with uh, Smashing Pumpkins to do a Carnival of Soul Power. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that is the worst musical thing I've ever heard in my head. That <laughs> yes. You so, could have at least said like Carnival of Solstice Bear or something. <laughs> yeah, but I would have to know about Smashing Pumpkins. And I just listened <laughs> to that episode not that long ago, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like said, I would have to know something about the Smashing Pumpkins after referencing one of their more obscure songs. Yeah. Yeah, but I that's because I know Lipstick Panel, not because I know Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say... These new Smashing Pumpkins songs. I haven't listened to them yet. I haven't I listened the, to them yet. I love the music video with all of the shots of uh, James Eha and fake James Eha pretending to play along with the synthesizers. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jimmy with the tambourine just kind of <laughs> just going here too. <laughs> Gotta make you everyone, me. you know. Yeah. Uh, I but, mean, to be fair, the Tonight Tonight music video is absolutely amazing. And throughout um, most of it, Darcy is pretending to play a cello. Well, she... Right. A lot of her involvement in the Pumpkins uh, is pretending to play it. <laughs> pretending that she played bass on the albums. So. Ooh, harsh. <laughs> boom! <laughs> boom! Boom! <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Lipstick Panel, hosted by Lipstick Generation. Lipstick Generation's music can be found on all major streaming platforms and at lipstickgeneration.com. If you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know your ranking of the subject in the comments down below. Feel free to leave us an episode suggestion also. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app, please leave a review and tell a friend about our show. Thanks and rock on!